Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Africa Sports. It is Champions League final time. It is Cape Town City time for a second season in a row. Let's hope that we repeat exactly what happened last season. Not exactly. Let's, let's not do an exact. Let's not go to, I think it was extra time, wasn't it, last season? Let's just win it comfortably in normal time. That's what we want to do. So this is it then. This is the final two games of the season. We're not even going to see the final game of the season, of the save, I guess, because it is an Ivorian Cup final, which we normally win quite comfortably. I think we've only ever lost one time in the Ivorian Cup, so we're not going to bother seeing that. It is Cape Town City that we are interested in. We are heading to Equatorial Guinea for the final inside, I think it's a 15,000-seater stadium, which isn't particularly big. 15,250, yeah, that is smaller than our own stadium. So I'd rather have just played it at home or even away in Cape Town. The final league table did finish like this. We actually finished on 70 points because we drew the final game of the season 0-0. Zero, zero. Why did I say 0-0? Zero, zero? Nil nil. That's what it's normally said. Nil nil against FC San Pedro. Also, ASAP Mimosas win their final game of the season 3-1. So they only finished four points behind us. But also that massive goal difference was pretty steep, wasn't it? Cape Town City round two. Obviously, we played them this time last season. We beat them because we are the current defending champions of the African Champions League. Let's make it two out of two. Let's win our second Champions League in a row and our final Champions League where we will be in charge of Africa sports. The starting lineup for the final then will be Ikunga in goal. It will be Martins, Keita, Aguirre and Agor as our back four with Aka returning from his injury. He shouldn't really be playing, but he's so good at football and this is probably the last time we're ever going to see him. Yusuf and Kayate will round off the midfield. Gaboho is also fit, but he's not particularly fit, similar to Aka. So what might happen is Aka might get subbed for Gaboho at some point during this match. Gaboho is obviously on the bench. The wingers will be Guigon and Lozi because Fred Quay is uh, he's, he's also not particularly fit. He gashed his leg about a week before the final. He's he's available to play. Again, he is on the bench. And then Ngesson, who got himself injured in the semi-final, he's completely out, so he's obviously not going to be playing in this one. And it will be Latte Lath as our striker because he scores goals like they are going out of fashion. He's got 37, something like some stupid. I mean, he's very good. He's very good at football. 36 goals all season, 17 in the league, 13 in the Champions League, four in the Ivorian National Cup, two in the Ivorian League Cup as well. He bloody loves a goal, which is a complete, just complete opposite to what he was when we first signed him, when he couldn't score to save his life. So we are here again, Cape Town City for the second season. I can't believe that we are playing Cape Town City again. I, I would have loved to have played wide ad Casablanca, but nope, it's Cape Town City for a second season in a row. We've just got to do the same thing that we did last season. I think we've improved. I think we've improved as a squad. I'm hoping they haven't. I say this as they have their first chance and they've almost put that in. Akunga is it gratefully grabbing onto that one. I think his name was Jax that went for the goal there. Well, 30 minutes in and we've done nothing. I'm a bit worried. We've done absolutely nothing. We've had one shot. They've had six. We've had one highlight and that is it. It is going to be a fairly dull and uneventful final if everything stays this way. But we might end up going extra time penalties. Half time, it is nil nil. Literally one highlight. This is the worst match that we've played all season. And we've lost games, and this is probably one of the worst ones. Well, as we're not winning, you're getting angry. Fires everybody up. I'm expecting three goals in the second half. We are seeing the first highlight of the second half. Jacks with the ball on the left hand side. Cape Town City coming forward with it. Agor is chasing Nguenya all the way. He's gone for a long range effort. Not the best, it's gone wide. Another chance for Cape Town. Knock with the corner. We need to get this clear. Aguirre does. And Gwenya, though, has it back once again. Roberts for Cape Town being forced away from goal. Bright Martin steals this away and the counter-attack is now on. Alozi with a yellow card. He's going to run off to the left-hand side. Needs Martins to get up there. Martins is going to collect it anyway. Herman Acker dinks it over. Alozi's going to just about keep that in play. Yes, he does. Back to Martins. Cross it in, buddy. He does. It's, it's Guigon at the back post. Squeer gone at the back post. It's our first decent chance of the game. And it's straight into the hands of the keeper. 55 minutes. We've got another highlight. Akunga in goal for us. Plays it forward to Aguirre. He's going to go long towards nobody. Towards absolutely nobody. But Guala just heads it down to Kuyate. Makes a bit of space for himself. And oh my word. It was almost in. It's going to be another chance for us from this corner. I'm guessing it's going to be Alozi going over to take it. Because it usually is. It is Czechzielozi stepping up towards the front post. Yusuf's there on the volley, 
and the keeper with a decent enough save to concede another corner. Right, we're getting there. We're getting close to scoring this goal. Alozi's corner comes in towards the front post. It's cleared by Cape Town. It's just cleared it even further. That highlight just ends then, right? What do we do? I mean, Alate Lat's playing badly. Alozi's playing badly. Cape Town have themselves a highlight. Guala with the ball. Plays it in to Malangu. Malangu forward to Guala on that left-hand side. Two in the box. They've gone back. Malangu once again. Bit of space on the right-hand side. We need to steal this away. That was the time you should have stolen it away. Instead, they're going to possibly get across into the box. It's taken a few deflections. We do manage to get it clear. And now Alozi's going to get on the end of this. This is a counter-attack from a very good chance for Cape Town. Latte Lath needs some support on the right-hand side. He doesn't actually. He's made it all himself. And he's hit it just wide. We're getting back into it. Guiagon is on a 6-6. So we're going to bring Guiagon off. We're going to bring Fred Quay on. Because Fred Quay is a thousand times better. Do we do Gaboho as well? We could do Gaboho for Yusuf. Swap you two around. Although I feel like Gaboho can play as that box-to-box. -box. I think that's what we're going to go for. We've got one final sub, which I'm saving for either Acker or Latte Lath. It is a chance for Cape Town just after the substitutions. Akunga comes out, comfortably holds on to the ball. So what are we going to do? Goalkeeper with it in his hands. Down the left-hand side, I reckon. Aguirre has it. Okay, we're going down the right-hand side instead. Smashes it upfield. Latte Lath doesn't win the header, but Fred Quay, the substitute, does collect the ball. With a plaster on his leg, he keeps going. Round one, round two, into the penalty area. Crosses it in. Alozi's there. Hits the defender. That was the chance. That was the chance right there. I can't remember if this goes extra time or penalties. I think it's extra time, because I think that's how we did it last season, was in extra time. But we don't get additional substitutions. We've got five minutes to play. Do we do Latte Lath off for Utara? We do. We, we risk it. Our top goal scorer is coming off for the final few minutes and then injury time and obviously penalties as well. There's 10 seconds to play. Oh my word. Oh, 10 seconds left to play. Cape Town nearly score. The full time whistle goes. So we're into extra time. Oh my word. Nil nil. Nil nil again. Passionately. We're not doing badly. Maybe. If everyone continues. That worked. I did a good team talk. Don't try and break anything or fix anything. Just leave it. Herman Acker should not be still on the pitch at this moment. But we have no choice because all of our substitutions have been used. I can see it going to penalties. I can see it happening again. Well, first half of extra time. Nothing happened. Nothing happened in the first half. Let's give him a get creative. We have suddenly kind of got back into this game. But we haven't seen anything in this extra time period. Nothing at all. 19 shots, 10 of them on target. Their goalkeeper is having a blinder. It's penalties. It is penalties. We've got no good penalty takers. Our 11 is our best penalty taker. Okay. Well, I mean, that's probably just put it in order of, of number, hasn't it? So, Agor is down there at the bottom. Aguirre is taking it after Cater. Fair enough. Whatever. Whatever. We're just going to go for that. Okay, then. Penalty shootout. In the Champions League final, Siasi versus Akunga. The Cameroonian goalkeeper goes the wrong way, but Siasi puts it well wide of the post. This is the start that we needed. Utara steps up now. Probably one of our oldest players, and he's about 27. Utara's penalty in off the post. That was lucky. Very, very lucky from Bahima Utara. It is now Malangu for Cape Town City. Right-footed penalty from Malangu. Where's it going to go? Straight down the middle. It is 1-1. Herman Acker, the Monaco loney, steps up. He is He's missed a lot of football recently. Steps up, left-footed penalty into the bottom corner. Decent enough, scored the goal, but the keeper probably should have done a little bit better. And Gwenya now, with a yellow card to his name. He's also left-footed. Ikunga's going to go left. He should have gone left. He did go left, but he didn't go far enough left. I knew where that was going. I mean, I didn't. I guessed. I completely guessed. Check Zialozzi now. He's been here since the start. He's probably the only player that has a Lozi's penalty into the bottom corner. We've only got to score one more now, maybe? Two more? One more. It's one more, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Zungu steps up for Cape Town. Ikunga, you really should have saved that. We don't need to score one more. We still need to score two more. If we score this, the pressure goes on to Cape Town. Fred Quay steps up the Porto Loney. Quay's penalty is straight down the middle. But did manage to find it into the back of the net. Keeper should have saved it. So it's all down to this. This final penalty. It is a man called Roberts. He's going to step up. I say it's all down to this. Even if he scores, we then have another chance. And I'm not sure who that other chance is going to fall to. 
Come on, Ikunga. Come on, Ikunga. Robert steps up down the middle. Ikunga should have saved it. It was right at him. It was right at him. He should have saved it. Jan Gaboho, the former Inter Milan player, is stepping up to take potentially the winning penalty in a Champions League final. All you've got to do, Jan, is just don't miss. Don't miss this, and we're double champions. Gaboho steps up. It's into the bottom corner. Yes! We are champions of Africa for two seasons in a row. I feel like we have done this. I feel like this save is done. I'm so glad that we've managed to do the Champions League, not once, but twice. Twice before Football Manager 21 comes out. Maybe it might already be out because I'm recording these in advance. But we're champions of Africa. Two seasons in a row against Cape Town City. The only South African side that don't seem to have our number. Cape Town City, I like you. Africa Sports celebrate famous treble. There could be more to come. We could win a fourth because we've won the Champions League, the Premier Division, the Super Cup, and we still have the League Cup as well. We have won the Champions League, medals for players. It's basically anyone who's kicked a ball once in the Champions League. Even some players who literally aren't at the club. Asenu Gay, Olivier Conan, Emeka Lawal even gets a medal. Good job, Emeka. You played one and a half games. Two times in a row for Africa Sports. That's probably a bigger achievement than winning it in the first place, isn't it? If, obviously, winning it twice is good, but twice in a row shows that we have become a very good squad. We have become champions. And we are actually, looking at it, we are the first team since 2019 to win it that isn't South African. We've been to three finals and won two of them. Not that we are sticking around for much longer in this save, but this is big news. This is something that I was hoping would have happened a lot earlier. The Ivorian Premier Division has moved up three places in the rankings. So they are now from 14th, they started off 15th, now the 11th highest rated league in, uh, in Africa. Which I don't know whether that means, does it change qualification places? I'm not sure, we get two in the Champions League, two in the Confederations Cup. I think that does change it, you know. I think we get an additional team in there now. Oh, and would you look at that? Asek Mimosas didn't go home at the end of the season without any trophies. They do win themselves the National Cup, the FA Cup. Good job, Asek Mimosas. Right, we're going to go forward. We're going to play LYS off camera in the League Cup final. We're going to come back for the end of season awards, where we'll have a quick chat, I think, about how we've done so far. It's time for the end of season awards, but as you can see there, we have won the Ivorian League Cup for the seventh season in a row, the seventh straight season, beating LYS 2-0 in the final. Should have been three, but Latte Laf missed another penalty. I think he's missed about six all season, which is a lot of penalties to miss. So then, let's take a look at the overall best 11. Most of these players should be names that you, I would say, might recognise. You should recognise the names. You might not know how good they were, because obviously we had a bit of a revolving door, and I didn't really focus too much on how good the players were. So Christian Drogba, the number one keeper. Sheriff Jimmo, left back. Cheek Karuma. Abdullah, is that, is that, no, it's Abubakar Kiate, isn't it? Abubakar Kiate as the centre-back. Charles Mayere, which I completely agree with. Dota Shorno. I think that's a bit of a weird one because he didn't really do a lot for us. Although he did play 49 games. But I, I would say Herman Acker was better in that position. But Dosa Shorno is there, fair enough. Gaboho and Zazu in the middle, which I completely agree with. Alozi and Fonsinho on the wings. Again, completely agree with that. Latte Lath makes his way in as the striker, which I do agree with that as well. Because Latte Lath is the only striker who scored a lot of goals. We've had strikers score goals. But Latte Lath got 37 all season. So he's the only one who actually took the chances and actually made them count. Team of the season then. It's a bit of a split for fans player. Fred Quay wins it on 36, but Alozi and Agor on 28 and 23 as well. So they're actually pretty close together. Goal of the season is Latte Lath. George Aguirre is signing of the season. I'm happy with that. He was one of those players that I looked and went, I think he's better than what we've got. And he did a reasonable job. He only played 20 league games, played, I think, pretty much every Champions League game for us. Did a very good job overall. 7.40 average rating. George was a decent player. I'm saying that like he's dead. Young player of the season, Herman Acker, who obviously we have on loan. Team of the season, it's kind of, it's the normal team, isn't it? It's the normal team. Drogba in goal. Agor, Keita, Aguirre and Numa as the left back. Obviously, Numa has moved on. Acker, Zamble and Yusuf in the middle. Okay, no Gaboho. Fair enough. Fred Quay, Alozi, and Latte Lath as the front three. There are some stats for you as well. Herman Acker getting nearly an average rating of an 8. 7.92 average rating for Herman Acker. I mean, he's, he's decent. He's actually very good, but he's not amazing, is he? He's certainly not amazing. 
but a, a 7.92 average rating, 7.93 in the league. He got an 8.7 in the Super Cup across five League Cup games or National Cup games, FA Cup games, 8.36. Herman Acker was one of those players that we just kind of found from CFDFA, and he's good. He's clearly good. Monaco will hopefully develop him into an international footballer. Alozi and Quay getting themselves the most assists. Basole getting the highest pass completion. He played like six games, but fair enough. We actually played four different goalkeepers this season as well. We played Drogba, we played Basole, we played Akunga, and we also played the other guy who started the first couple of Champions League games. So we had a little bit of a rotation in the keeper position. Africa Sports season review. We've won four things out of five. The only thing we lost is the Ivorian National Cup to the eventual winners, ASEC Mimosas. Next season, they want us to play football and they are looking to sell. So we are still under a board takeover. It's been happening since about February. Nothing's happened. We can't buy anyone. We can't sell anyone. We can't do anything because of this board sale. And basically, Alexis Vagba can't seem to shift it. Nobody seems to kind of agree to sell anything. We're just going to agree because we can't do anything other than that. I mean, we can't turn around and say, well, they want us to reach the final and win the league. What more can we turn around to say? Oh my word, we've got someone in the actual Ivory Coast team and he might play a game. Jan Gaboho is going to the World Cup for the Ivory Coast. He's in there. Where is he? He's not in there. He is there. Look at him. He's got no caps. He's 25 years old. Basilia Logan is there as well. He's still at FC Shenhua. 8.75 million pounds for Logan. He's got two caps to his name. That is good. We've seen Musa Dossashorno. You might see Serge Aurier there. Um, I, I've been trying to sign him. But he, do he doesn't, well, he can't do it now, but he didn't want to sign because he turned around and said, I've got too much time left on my contract at Bologna. I reckon we could tempt Serge to come to Ivory Coast. I think we could do that. Another former player of ours there, actually, you can't quite see him because I'm in the way, is Nicholas Tai, who signed for AFAD Shekinu, and he's in the actual Ivory Coast team. Yes, he's their third choice goalkeeper bef behind uh, Sabuya Mande and Drissa Bamba, but he's still there, which is pretty good. I guess we'll have a quick look as well at the Ivory Coast in general. Um, they started off 67th in the world. They're now up to 30th. But I don't think we've really had too much to do with that. As much as I like to claim that we did, I don't think we're involved in that. Have they won any competition since the start of the save? They won the African Under-20s Cup of Nations. When did that, A couple of seasons ago. Can we see? Because we would have had players involved in that. We would have had players involved in that. Is it that one there? It'd be this one here, wouldn't it? So, I mean, they won their group. Can we... I don't think we're even going to be able to see the final, are we? So the final was this here, which, I mean, neither of these are our players, are they? I think they're both actually ASAP Mimosas. FC San Pedro. Okay. So, yeah, looking at the Ivory Coast as a whole, they haven't really done... Oh, no, they were runners-up. They were runners-up against Mali in 2022, which we wouldn't have had anyone in that squad. But this is the B team. This is the B team. I don't know how any of this stuff works. So if we go to the the final there, again, it's this guy from A Saint Mimosas was playing, and uh Charles Yao Conan from Atletico Madrid. Who's he, he pretty, he's not bad, is he? He's not bad at football. A bit more time has passed and we are now on the first of June. We have our end of season tax builds and whatnot. So this is the one I'm always interested in. We have made some decent money. We've got £825,000 a season now in terms of sponsorship deals. That is good. That is a lot more in terms of sponsorship deals. It's gone up by, what, a big number. A number. It's gone up by a number. Obviously, everything else seems to have increased, which is good news as well. We made £333 of broadcast revenues because I think we played a match against Porto. And I think that was on TV. There you go. So, yeah, we played a match against Porto. We got £720 from it, apparently. Fair enough. Also, Qatar SC keep wanting to buy a Lozy and I don't want to sell him. Right, we're not going to end just yet. What I'm going to do, because we have, it's a World Cup season, and we have one player in the Ivory Coast national team, I'm going to simulate the World Cup and see how well Gaboho does. He might not even get a game. Well, we are back at the end of the group stages, and if I'm perfectly honest, the fact that they are playing Ethiopia in the African Cup of Nations qualifying round... I don't think they went through. No, they clearly did not. They lost 3-1 against Australia. And did Gaboho play? It does not look like it. And then they lost 2-1 against Belgium. And also, Gaboho didn't play in that either. I mean, that's the fact that he went is, is alright. But, I mean, he has a cap. He did get a cap. 
Did he get one in a friendly? Maybe he got one in a friendly. I'm taking this as a win. How do we find out? Is it information? Information. He had his international debut on the 6th of the 6th. He did. He got it in the friendly. He got it in, in that match there. He got it in that match there. He, he, he came off the bench with about five, <laughs> about five minutes. He played about five minutes for the Ivory Coast. Oh, 13. 13 minutes. But he played... We've got a player in the Ivory Coast squad with a cap. We've done it. But that's a success, right? Is Maybe. Probably not. Anyway, that is going to bring our Africa Sports save to an end for now. And by for now, I mean probably tomorrow, if I can get it recorded in time. The plan will be, I am going to do Africa Sports The Legacy episode, where what I'll do is I'm probably going to try and play three more seasons. I don't know how feasible that is. I might holiday three seasons in charge, just to kind of see how far we can go with us in charge, and then... I want to holiday for maybe 10 seasons to see how far Africa Sports and the Ivory Coast can go as a nation without me sticking my big nose in, basically. That's the plan. So hopefully tomorrow, it might not be tomorrow, it might be a day or so after. It also might be during Football Manager 21. But, it, you know, it's hopefully something that still might interest you. Thank you very much for watching this episode, this season and this series of Football Manager 2020 with Africa Sports building a nation of the Ivory Coast. I'd like to say it was a success... I think if I'm going to do something similar in FM21, I probably want to start it a lot sooner. Maybe around sort of January, February time. Maybe kind of that area. So it gives me plenty of time to maybe 10, 15 seasons. Quick fire seasons like these ones as well. So we can actually see a lot more progression. But I think it was fun. It was certainly fun. It was enjoyable. I hope everyone else who did watch it did enjoy as well. If you did... Make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can see everything that's going to happen in Football Manager 21 when that comes out, which might already be out because I'm recording these in advance. Also hit the like button on this video as well because it does help me out a lot to get a little bit more exposure to the channel. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.